basically what happened is when they found out Joe Biden had classified documents in his garage, his garage, if you're a Frenchman, you might say. You can see it here. Let's just go ahead and get the big picture there. You know, he's got a box on Afghanistan over here. He's got a cabinetry of Senate documents over here. And we go back to the article. You know, cabinets, boxes, in his garage, he's got an office full of drawers of classified documents. And so what happened was they interviewed him when this happened, because you know it was this huge fiasco with Donald Trump having in the Mar-a-Lago in Florida as well. And they interviewed him, and he couldn't remember things. He couldn't remember, you know, when he was vice president a couple times. He couldn't remember his son's, uh, the year his son died. And they said, you know, we could put him in, char in, in front of a trial, in front of a jury, but the jury is just going to say, hey, this is an old man who means well, but he just can't remember where he puts the classified documents, God bless him. And you might be thinking, okay, well, isn't that good for them because he won't get charged with anything then? But the answer to that is no, because he's the president, El Presidente, if you're familiar with butter commercials. That's not good for El Presidente because that means you have a president who can't remember things. And when you're going to talk to President Xi Jinping, that's not even a joke, when you're going to talk to Big Ping and you can't remember what your trade deal is with him or you can't remember who he is, for example, that's not a good sign. So Joe Biden was very upset at reporters who were, who were questioning his memory. But there's an article here in the New York Post about this interview that they conducted with Biden, they found um, that he didn't remember lots of stuff. And even when he was talking to his ghostwriter named Mark Zwanitzer in April 2017, three months after leaving the vice presidency, he had these official records and he said that he didn't want to turn them in. Now, they had a bunch of audio recordings from this interview with Biden and and the biographer, I'm guessing. I mean, I, I'm not surprised that Joe Biden can't write. <laughs> He's 6,000 years old. Maybe he writes in hieroglyphs or something like that. But the audio from this interview with Biden, they had him, or I shouldn't say they, but he, th this guy deleted some of it. And he said, I'm not going to say how much of the percentage it was m of my motivation, that meaning it wasn't, his idea to delete them, or he's at least he's not going to say that how much of it was his idea to delete them after they they said they're going to put an investigation into this. So basically, they started going through these these audio recordings and finding this sort of stuff that he said he he didn't want to turn them in. He's giving these documents to this uh, biographer or ghostwriter, whatever you call him, and he also gave note notebooks authorities also found information in the notebooks that remain classified up to the top secret level include sensitive compartmented information including from compartments used to protect concerning human intelligence sources so giving up their secret agents or their informants overseas for example again they get into all the stuff in there um and here's where they say it's not good to put him on trial. At trial, Mr. Biden would likely present himself to a jury, as he did during our interview with him, as a sympathetic, well-meaning man, elderly man with a poor memory. Isn't that someone you want for your president? He's just a well-meaning old chap with a poor memory. Let's. Feel, you should feel a jury's going to feel bad for President Biden because he's just an old guy who can't remember where he put the classified documents. God bless. The United States of America. Now, there's more to this. This is the information which he couldn't re remember and essentially said, you know, he's not really mentally fit. He, he's got a lot of memory problems. Biden did not remember when he was vice president. Huh. Forgetting on the first day of the interview when his term ended, if it was 2013, when did I stop being vice president? And forgetting on the second day of the interview when his term began. In 2009, am I still vice president? That is 2009 and 2013. He became vice president in 2008 and then officially starts it 2009 on inauguration day. So Obama gets elected in 08. Then on the first day of 2009, he's vice president. 
And he says, am I still vice president in 2009? <laughs> and then in 2013, he's not sure if he's still vice president, even though he was vice president for another three to four years after that, depending on when it was said. So not a good whole interview here for President Biden. When on the first day these people are interviewing him, he can't even remember when he was vice president. They went on to say, he did not remember even within several years when his son Bo died, which is May 2015. And his memory appeared hazy when describing the Afghanistan debate that was once so important to him. Among other things, he mistakenly said he, quote, had a real difference, end quote, of opinion with General Carl Eikenberry, when in fact Eikenberry was an ally whom Mr. Biden cited approvingly in his Thanksgiving 2009 memo to President Obama. I'm not going to pretend to any, know anything about General Carl Eikenberry, except he sounds like some sort of villain in a serial-related cartoon TV show. But the fact that he didn't even know within several years of when his son died is kind of a big thing, because he is always arguing this point. He's always talking about and bringing up his son when he's talking about his family and how much he cares about them and his son Hunter and about how much he cares about the dealings overseas and the troops over there. So it's really weird that he doesn't even remember it. Now, this isn't the only story Joe Biden can't remember. If we recall, he's got memories about, you know, the kid swimming up against his legs. And I forget what the guy's name is. Cracker Jack or whatever, the uh, Pickle Barrel, whatever the guy's name is, he talks about getting into scuffle with. He's got stories about the first time he told his son about gay marriage. He's got all these types of different stories that he basically makes up on the spot and, and misremembers over the year, years. So even if they are real stories, every time he tells them over the past 20 years, he misremembers them, which really goes to show you that he's just making things up in the moment, depending on who he's talking to and what he's talking about. There's, there's more stuff. He's got the old treadmill in the garage, a bunch of FedEx containers. Um, here's one of the one of the boxes with classified information in it. White House lawyer Richard Sober chided Hoor, Hoor being the guy who, um, we'll scroll back up to the top, they said who Hoor is, <laughs> which is an interesting name. He's a special counsel, Robert Hoor, found in a bombshell report. So we'll go back down. Where to go? Sensitive records. Oh. There we go. In a Thursday afternoon statement for including a number of inaccurate and inappropriate comments in the report. So Biden's White House is saying that was inappropriate of you. Without disputing the accuracy of the descriptions of the president, although Biden's lapses in memory have been useful for avoiding criminal liability, they're likely to be a serious political problem as national polls already show large majorities of voters believe he is too old. If you're too senile to stand trial, then you're too senile to be president, said Alex Pfeiffer, the MAGA and pro-Trump pack. Now, I didn't read that part of the article. Great minds think alike, you might say, but that's basically how I saw it, is even though it makes him not criminally liable, I guess... He's the president, and it's kind of weird that you would fall back on him. Well, he's just too old to remember. Turn it up, Jordan.